Welcome to Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. We are located at 920 Los Robles Boulevard here in Sacramento, California. Every Sunday at 9 a.m., we have Sunday school. And at 11 a.m., we have Children Church. Both are on Zoom. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m., we have our midweek Bible study also on Zoom. All Zoom links can be found in the description. Thank you for your continued support to our ministry. Your contributions are greatly appreciated and help to further kingdom building. For those who wish to give, you can mail your contributions directly to the church, or you can also give in person. The church is open every Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Or you can give online through our website or titling link. The link can be found in the description. Be sure to like and follow us on our Facebook page, and also be sure to visit our website for more information. Remember to continue social distancing, be safe, and stay well. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope to see you next Sunday right here on our YouTube channel. God bless. So today I want to talk to you about something super important right now, especially right now, worry. With all these vaccines, with COVID going around, with everything that's going on, what do I do with this worry? I want to go to Matthew chapter 6, and we'll be going from verse 34. We'll read 25 on down later, but I want to start with verse 34. Watch what it says. It says, Be not therefore anxious for the morrow, for the morrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Let's pray and then we'll explain everything. Heavenly Father, thank you again for another day. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for all that you're doing. We ask that you touch this word with your Holy Spirit. Allow us to get good full nutrients out of this word that we're about to receive. Allow us to receive it, apply it in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So in verse 25, let's immediately go down and let's get into it. Therefore, I say unto you, be not anxious for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on is not the life more than the food and the body than the raiment. It's trying to teach us immediately as we jump into this verse that life is more than what's on the outside. So we have to immediately see that our faith has to cover the inside of what's going on. When we are covering our faith on the inside, that means we trust God from the inside out. That means no stress, no worry, not being anxious on the inside, but completely trusting God on the inside so that no matter what happens on the outside, I am completely and totally trusting God. I never forget when a man was riding on an airplane and the turbulence was just literally taken over and a lot of people on the airplane was shaken up. They were nervous. They didn't know what to do, but this one man was so calm. At the end of the flight, a lot of people were like, how are you so calm? How did you keep your composure? He says, well, I'm also a pilot. So I realized that when the turbulence on the outside wasn't as bad as what other people thought it was due to the experience that I've had in the air. I realized that it wasn't bad enough to take the plane down. And I knew that the pilots ahead were also experienced. So he said his faith was not only in himself to trust a pilot, but also knowing the situation ahead of time. One thing that can give us a lot of faith in any situation is reading the word of God so that we can know situations that are getting ready to happen ahead of time. The scripture gives us examples of not to be anxious, not to worry, not to think of the things that are going on on the outside. So when they finally do happen in our life, we're a little bit more calm due to the simple fact that we've already prepared ourselves through the word. But most importantly, it's not only what is happening, but it's who we trust. And once you get that momentum of trusting God all the time and completely just depending upon God, then you have an advantage in any situation because you know the final say so has to go through God. And when you know this, then you won't be so anxious. You won't be so worried. Let's go to verse 26. Behold, the birds of the heaven that they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are not ye of much more value than they? And which of you, being anxious, can add one cubit into the measure of his life? Scripture is asking right here, are you not more valuable than the birds that God is taking care of? 
Did he not send his son for you? Do you not see the value that you are worth so much that Christ came down from heaven, died on earth to save you, went down to hell, grabbed the keys and came back up to earth to show you that you are so valuable that I want you to see that I died and rose again so that you could be forgiven, so that you can overcome any situation. So the scripture is immediately saying, I want you to see that you're more valuable than anything that you're going against, anything that you're going towards, because I am with you and your value exceeds any situation that you may be facing. In verse 27, it says that you cannot add one cubit into measure of your life by being anxious or by worrying. Meaning this, you can't add one second, you can't add one minute, one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year by worrying. So all this is doing to you is taking away time. Every time you're anxious, every time you're worrying, you're taking away time that you cannot get back. But if we learn to be have valuable time by trusting in God, by reading our word, by seeing what's coming ahead, we can be more calm during a situation like the man that was on the airplane. Verse 29, yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God do so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? But be ye therefore anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles, meaning the unbelievers, those that don't know God, that's what they seek. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. This is what the scripture is saying to us. I'm hoping you're catching this is such a good word. It's saying instead of worrying, instead of worrying what you got to wear, instead of worrying what you're going to eat, instead of worrying what to put on, instead of worrying what God is going to do, have faith. Don't even try to figure it all out. Have faith and seek God first. Seek his kingdom first means seeking kingdom business. In Luke chapter two, we see where Jesus was away from his parents and his mother came back and said, did you not know we were worried? And he says, mother, did you not know I was I am about my father's business? When we're about God's business, we don't have time to worry about the small things anymore. More, We're focused on who can we lead into the kingdom of heaven? Who can we talk to about God? Who can we encourage to keep going when they want to give up? Who can we pray for? Who can we send an encouraging word to? Who can we stop talking about and start praying for? Who can we encourage instead of telling them what they cannot do? Who can we send the word of God to? so that people can feel more empowered and more encouraged to keep going. Watch what verse 34 does for us. Be not therefore anxious for the morrow, for the morrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Meaning this, stop worrying about tomorrow. I know the bills do. I know you don't know where the kid is going and what the kid is doing out there. I know you're worried about your child. I know you're worried about your business. I know you've seen all the other things on the news. I'm telling you, don't be worried about tomorrow. Why? Because the same God that has covered you yesterday, that covered you today, will also be there to cover tomorrow. It's not your job to worry. It's not your job to be anxious. It's your job to go into the storm and trust God through it. Let's go into another one. I'm pretty sure you guys will have known this. This was one of the verses I asked you to read. First Kings chapter four. Starting with verse one, it says, and King Solomon was over all Israel and these were the princes whom he had, excuse me, first, second Kings chapter four. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear Jehovah. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two children to be bondmen. So here we have two problems immediately. Number one, her husband is dead. Number two, the creditor wants her children to go into slavery to pay for what they owe. So there's two problems. Number one, I have debt, I have death, and now I have a bondman trying to take because of the debt. 
Verse two, and Elijah said unto her, what shall I do for thee? Tell me what hast thou in the house? She said, thy handmaid have not anything in the house save a pot of oil. The reason we shouldn't be worried in any situation as long as we have God is because as long as we have anything, we have enough for God to work with. I know some of you say, I don't know if I should join church. I don't know if I should participate in church. I don't know if I should go for it with what God is telling me. But I'm telling you, if God is speaking to you, as long as you have anything, he has enough to get you through. David was only a kid and he helped him defeat Goliath. Joseph was only a teenager when he gave him the vision and yet he was second in charge. Moses had a stuttering problem and yet God used him to speak to the people to go for it. And I'm telling you, you looking at yourself and seeing everything that you may say to yourself is wrong is coming from the enemy. And I'm telling you, as long as you have anything, you have enough for God to use you. Verse three. Then he said, go borrow these vessels abroad, all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And thou shalt go in and shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. He said, hey, I know you're in debt. But in order to follow the word of God, in this instance only, I want you to go more into debt. I'm slowing down because I want you to capture this. I'm in debt over my head. The people are trying to take my children into bondmen or to go into slavery. My husband is dead in this situation. And you're telling me to go borrow more. You're telling me to go deeper into debt than I already am. In this instance, this is not showing to go in debt more. This is showing investment. I want you to catch this because this is very good. When they go and borrow more, they are investing not only in themselves, but in the word of God. And when you invest in the word of God, your return is beautiful. And when you can trust God in any situation, your return is beautiful because you're going into a situation with peace rather than destruction. You're going into a situation with faith rather than doubt. You're not wasting your time in worry. You're not wasting your time being anxious. You're using your valuable time to use faith in God. Verse five, so she went from them, shut the door upon her son, her and her upon her sons. They brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then he, she said, she came and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil pay thy debt and live thou and thy sons of the rest. I want you to catch this. She did immediately what the man of God said to do until she couldn't do it anymore. Did you guys catch that? She kept giving pots. She shut the door. It was just her and her sons. She kept giving pots and putting them under the oil and filling them up to the brim. And what happened when she had nothing left is stopped. I'm telling you, that you still have so much more to give in this body of Christ. You still have so much more to do in this body of Christ until God says you have no more left to give. I want you to keep pushing, keep striving. Don't let people frustrate you. Don't let people make you quit. Don't, make people, don't let people talk about you to the point where you stay away. I want you to come back with a fire that says, until God says, I'm done, I am not finished, I'm going to keep pressing. Watch what Paul says. I press unto the mark of the calling, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What is he saying? I have to ignore the past and I have to pay attention to what God has ahead of me. Because as long as I'm focused on what's ahead, as long as I'm focused on what God has ahead, as long as I'm seeking the kingdom of God first, it's his job to add the rest. And I'm telling you, as long as we are kingdom focused, we won't have time to get deterred by hearsay, what people say about us, what people spread rumors about us, what people talk about behind our bats. We know we're kingdom focused. That's God's job to figure out what to do with them. That's God's job to figure out how to handle that situation. It's you and I job to make sure that we are completely focused on being a blessing and seeking God first. Last but not least, in order to do this, in order to give God our all, we have to realize three simple things. That number one, our faith in God will take away our worry. 
Our faith in God will take away our worry. Our God is so big and so strong that he can handle any situation. There's not a situation that God is looking at and saying, I don't know what you're going to do in that situation. I'm going to have to leave. No, he's saying, hey, this is our problem. And the moment that you release it from our problem to my problem, that's when the transition will happen. The moment that you say, God, this ain't my problem. I, I don't know why I've been stressing off this. I don't know why I've been losing sleep off this. This is your problem. Once we get to that level, that's when God is able to do anything and everything. Last scripture, Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 26. Matthew chapter 14, starting at verse 26. And it reads as thus. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee upon the waters. Peter said, If it's really you, God, if it's really you moving in the impossible, let me join. If it's really you doing the most difficult things that man can't understand, let me be a part of it. If it's really you out there, God, when I was afraid, but now I see you moving, let me do that with you. And that's when life can really change for us. When we no longer say, God, I see you working, but God, if there's anything that you need me to do, if there's anything that you want me to do today, if there's anybody you want me to speak to, if there's anybody you want me to bless, let me be a part of it. 29, and he said, come. And Peter went down from the boat and walked upon the waters to come to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and took hold of him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? In plain American language, why did you doubt me? I, I saw the situation. Why did you doubt me? I saw what you were going through. Why did you doubt me? The moment that we can go through any situation and say, God, I know you got me. I know you can handle this. The sickness looked bad, but I know you can heal me. The debt looks bad, but I know you can get me out of this. The job situation looks shaky, but I know you can provide. The moment we get to that level in any situation that we believe God can take it, will be the moment that we will no longer have people saying, what are you worried about now? But looking at us and saying, how did you have faith through it all? And that is the moment that we know we completely trust God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for showing us that worry and being anxious has no, no being in our lives anymore. That we are to trust you with our whole life and to be completely dependent upon you. Lord God, the more we trust in you, the less time we have to doubt. If there's anybody out there who has not received you as their Lord and Savior and wondering, should they do it today? Should they come and confess their sins, believe in you and acknowledge you as their Lord and Savior? Let them ask and say, Lord, it is me. I am a sinner. I want to be forgiven of my sins. Please come into my life. To that person, Lord God, that has just repeated those words, Welcome them, please, Lord God, to the kingdom of heaven. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All in the heart.